radiation physics nature of radiation radiation is the transmission of energy through space and matter it may occur in two forms particulate and electromagnetic radioactivity small atoms have roughly equal numbers of protons and neutrons whereas larger atoms tend to have more neutrons than protons this makes them unstable and they may break up releasing alpha or beta particles or gamma rays this process is called radioactivity let's take a look at the comparative analysis between alpha rays beta particles and gamma rays alpha particles are helium nuclei whereas beta particles are otherwise identical to electrons the third type of radioactivity is gamma decay so gamma rays are photons which is a form of electromagnetic radiation that's non particulate whereas alpha rays and beta particles are a form of particulate radiation alpha particles are double positive charged hence they have a heavy mass whereas beta particles are smaller they are lighter and they carry a single negative charge gamma rays are the least heavy among all these three or they are neutral owing to the heavy mass of alpha particles they densely ionize matter through which they pass they quickly give up their energy and penetrate only a few micrometers of body like an ordinary sheet of paper absorbs them to stopping alpha particles acquire two electrons and become neutral helium atoms a neutron in a radioactive nucleus decays it produces a proton a beta particle and a neutrino so beta particles they are high speed particles and they are not densely ionizing thus they are able to penetrate matter to a greater depth than alpha particles and they can penetrate up to a depth of 1.5 cm in tissues beta particles are used in radiation therapy for treatment of some skin cancers the rate of loss of energy from a particle as it moves along its track through matter or tissue is its linear energy transfer that is let the greater its physical size and charge and the lower its velocity the greater is its let electromagnetic radiation electromagnetic radiation is the movement of energy through space as a combination of electric and magnetic fields it is generated when the velocity of an electrically charged particle is altered gamma rays x rays ultraviolet rays visible light infrared radiation or heat microwaves and radio waves are all examples of electromagnetic radiation gamma rays originate in the nuclei of radioactive atoms they typically have greater energy than do x rays x rays in contrast are produced extra nuclearly from the interaction of electrons with large atomic nuclei in x ray machines the types of radiation in the electromagnetic spectrum may be ionizing or non ionizing depending on their energy All electromagnetic waves travel at the velocity of light in a vacuum. The X-ray machine, the primary components of an X-ray machine are the X-ray tube and its power supply. The X-ray tube is positioned within the tube head along with some components of the power supply. Often the tube is recessed within the tube head to improve the quality of the radiographic image. The primary functions of the power supply of an X-ray machine are to provide a low voltage current to heat the X-ray tube filament and generate a high potential difference between the anode and cathode. Photons that are of such low energy that they cannot reach the receptor contribute to patient exposure or risk but do not offer any benefit. Consequently to reduce patient dose such low energy photon should be removed from the beam. This can be accomplished in part by placing an aluminum filter in the path of the beam. An aluminum filter preferentially removes many of the low energy photons with lesser effect on the high energy photons that are able to contribute to making an image. A collimator is a metallic barrier with an aperture in the middle used to reduce the size of the x-ray beam and thereby the volume of irradiated tissue. Round and rectangular collimators are most frequently used in dentistry. Use of collimation also improves image quality. Collimating the x-ray beam thus reduces the exposure area and thus the number of scattered photons reaching the film. X-ray tube an x-ray tube is composed of a cathode and an anode situated within an evacuated glass envelope or tube. Electrons stream from a filament in the cathode to a target in the anode where they produce x-rays. The cathode in an x-ray tube consists of a filament and a focusing cup. The filament is the source of electrons within the x-ray tube. It is a coil of tungsten wire about 2 mm in diameter and 1 cm or less in length. It is mounted on two stiff wires that support it and carry the electric current. These two mounting wires lead through the glass envelope and connect to both the high and low voltage electrical sources. The filament is heated to incandescence by the flow of current from the low voltage source and emits electrons at a rate proportional to the temperature of the filament. The filament lies 
eyes in a focusing cup, a negatively charged concave reflector made of molybdenum. The parabolic shape of the focusing cup electrostatically focuses the electrons emitted by the filament into a narrow beam directed at a small rectangular area on the anode called the focal spot. The extra tube is evacuated to prevent collision of the fast-moving electrons with the gas molecules, which would significantly reduce their speed. Production of X-rays most high-speed electrons traveling from the filament to the target interact with the target electrons and release their energy as heat. Occasionally, however, electrons convert their kinetic energy into X-ray photons by the formation of brehm starling and characteristic radiation. Talking about brehm starling radiation, the sudden stopping or slowing of high-speed electrons by tungsten nuclei in the target produces brehm starling photons, the primary source of radiation from an X-ray tube. brehm starling means breaking radiation in German. Occasionally, electrons from the filament directly hit the nucleus at the target atom. When this happens, all the kinetic energy of the electron is transferred into a single X-ray photon. The energy of the resultant photon is thus numerically equal to the energy of the electron, that is the voltage applied across the X-ray tube at that instant. More frequently, high-speed electrons have near or wide misses with atomic nuclei. In these interactions, the electron is attracted toward the positively charged nuclei. Its path is altered towards the nuclei and it loses some of its velocity. This deceleration causes the electron to lose kinetic energy that is given off in the form of many new photons. The closer the high-speed electron approaches the nuclei, the greater is the electrostatic attraction between the nucleus and the electron, breaking effect and energy of the resulting brehm starling photons. Thus, two types of photons are produced, one which are of high energy and second type which are of low energy. The photons of high energy penetrate through anatomic structures. They reach the image receptor and are useful for diagnostic radiology. Whereas the photons of low energy contribute to patient exposure, but they cannot reach the receptor and do not offer any benefit. Thus, to reduce patient dose, such low energy photons should be removed from the beam. This can be accomplished in part by placing an aluminum filter in the path of the beam. An aluminum filter preferentially removes many of the low energy photons with lesser effect on the high energy photons that are able to contribute to making an image. Total filtration is the sum of the inherent filtration plus any added external filtration. Inherent filtration consists of the materials that X-ray photons encounter as they travel from the focal spot on the target to form the usable beam outside the tube enclosure. These materials include the glass wall of the extra tube, the insulating oil that surrounds many dental tubes, and the barrier material that prevents the oil from escaping through the extra port. The inherent filtration of most extra machines ranges from the equivalent of 0.5 to 2 mm of aluminum. External filtration is applied in the form of aluminum disc placed over the port in the head of the extra machine. Government regulations require the total filtration in the path of a dental x-ray beam to be equal to the equivalent of 1.5 mm of aluminum up to 70 kilo voltage and 2.5 mm of aluminum for higher for all higher voltages interactions of x-rays with matter in dental imaging the x-ray beam enters the face of a patient interacts with hard and soft tissues and then strikes a digital sensor of film the incident beam contains photons of many energies but is spatially heterogeneous Four types of interaction can take place. No interaction where the photons pass through the patient without any hindrance. Coherent scattering which constitute up to about 7% of the total of interaction in a dental exposure. Here the photons are scattered from the outer electron. Photoelectric absorption which accounts for 20% of the total interactions in a dental exposure. And here the photons eject in an electron and ceases to exist releases a characteristic photon. Whereas in Compton scattering, which accounts for 49% of the interactions in dental exposure, the photon ejects outer electron and both of them scatter. Coherent scattering, it is also known as classical, elastic or Thomson scattering. It may occur when a low energy incident photon passes near an outer electron of an atom. The incident photon interacts with the electron by causing it to become momentarily excited at the same frequency as the incoming photon. The incident photon ceases to exist. The excited electron then returns to the ground state and generates another extra photon with the same frequency or energy as in the incident beam. Usually the secondary photon is emitted at an angle to the path of the incident photon. The net effect is that the direction of the incident extra photon is altered. Coherent scattering contributes little to film fog because the number of scattered photons is small and the energy is too low for many of them to reach the film or sensor. Photoelectric absorption, it is critical in diagnostic imaging. This process occurs when an incident photon interacts with an electron in an inner orbit 
orbital of an atom of the absorbing medium. The photon ejects the electron from its orbital and becomes a recoil electron that is known as photoelectron. At this point, the instant photon ceases to exist. The kinetic energy imparted to the recoil electron is equal to the energy of the incident photon minus the binding energy of the electron. In the case of atoms with low atomic numbers, like for example those in most biologic molecules, the binding energy is small and the recoil electron acquires most of the energy of the incident photon. The probability that a photon will be absorbed by a photoelectric interaction in bone is approximately 6.5 6.5 times greater than in an equal thickness of soft tissues. It is this difference in the absorption that makes the production of a radiographic image possible. Compton scattering, it occurs when a photon interacts with an outer orbital electron. In this interaction, the incident photon collides with an outer electron which receives kinetic energy and recoils from the point of impact. The path of the incident photon is deflected by this interaction and is scattered in a new direction from the site of the collision. The energy of the scattered photon equals the energy of the incident photon minus the sum of the kinetic energy gained by the recoil electron and its binding energy. As with photoelectric absorption, Compton scattering results in the loss of an electron and ionization of the absorbing atom. The probability of a Compton interaction is directly proportional to the electron density of the absorber. As a result, Compton interactions contribute to the formation of an image. Hope you like this video on radiation physics. Please do like and subscribe and share this video. Thank you.